In this video I make the box on which I will put the jig to root the tenons. I draw all the pieces in my plywood board and I cut them with a jigsaw. I sand the edges and I begin to assemble the box. I put the front in the middle of the base and I draw a couple of lines to know exactly where to screw the sides. I screw the base to one of the sides. With the help of a square and a clamp, I put a small piece of plywood that will help me to put the front in place. I draw a line to know the place for the screws. The top of the front must be flush with the sides. With the help of the other side, I put the front in place. The top of the front and the top of the sides must be flush. I screw the front to the base. And I assemble the other side. The base is very long, to clamp it easily to the workbench. I screw the top of the box. This is the support for the proper rotor tenon jig. I have to check if everything is ok. Oops. That happens if you are not very careful cutting the pieces. And there is the problem. I will have to rasp to lower that side in the front top. It is just a moment using a rasp. There is it. It looks flat enough. Now it is time to put the fence. I place my workpiece on the front and I make a mark. I hammer a couple of small nails in the fence, just until I can see the tips in the other side. I check which edge of the fence is the straightest. I put the square against the top of the box. I align it with the mark I made on the front and I clamp it. I put the straightest side of the fence against the square and I hammer the nails. I fix it to the front with small screws. Now I can remove the nails or I can finish hammering them. Finally, I just need to check that the head of my workpiece will be parallel to the top of the box. And there I have my box. It is time to prepare the jig itself. I mean the marquetry piece with the hole to guide the router guide bush. But I will show how to make that dig in the next video. 
Now I want to show one problem I had after I used the jig for the first time. When I rooted the first tenon, I realized that the shoulders were not square. There is the problem, in the shoulder. At first I thought I was pushing too much the router against the jig, causing a deformation in the front of the market board. So I put a strip of plywood to better support the market jig. But that didn't fix the problem. Finally I found that the support in the front were not square. Selma, wink! I put another screw in the side, near the base, and I removed all the screws in the side. Using a clamp, with the help of a square and the strip of plywood I had put, I moved the front, until it was square with the side top edge. I had to drill new guide holes for the screws. I screwed the pieces. I removed the screw I had put near the base, just to save some screw. I already used a lot of them, and I repeated the same operation in the other side. Finally, I checked that the front and the jig support were at 90 degrees before I root again. And there it is, everything is square. But now I have another problem. Because I moved the front, the tenon is not centered. There is a difference of about 2 mm to each side of the tenon. I tried to move the jig support 1 mm in the same direction I moved the front. Half the difference I have to each side of the tenon. After several attempts moving the jig support and the marquetry jig, routing a new tenon after each move to check it, I've been very lucky to obtain a well-centered tenon in the wooden bar head. Now everything is ok. Shoulders and wooden bar faces are at right angles and the tenon is centered. Now you know, when assembling the box, remember that you must make sure to put the front and the jig support at a perfect 90 degrees angle. In the next video I will show how I made the market return on jig to guide the router. If you don't want to lose it, remember to subscribe to my channel. In the information below this video you can find the link to the article in my blog, with the plans and more information about this router tenon jig. Thanks for watching.